Hello and welcome back. This is the last part of section 1.3 of chapter 1. In this video, we shall define and study three equivalent concepts. Okay. So, let A be a subset of R. We say that A is compact if a is closed and bounded. Now, this is not the real definition. This is just a temporary definition for this course. In Math 2201, I will give you the real definition. We, st we shall study this concept in more details and in uh, full generality. Okay? But for the purpose of this course, all that we need to know is that a compact set is closed and bounded, if and only if. Okay? So, for example, any closed interval of the form AB is compact, okay? because it's closed and bounded. Bounded means bounded from above and from below. Okay. R is not compact. Why? R is closed, but it's unbounded. The interval 0 infinity closed is also closed, but it's unbounded. Okay? Similarly for minus infinity 0. Okay? So, these sets are not compact because they are unbounded, but they are closed. The open interval 0, 1 is, is bounded, but not closed. Okay? So it's not compact. The open interval 0, infinity is neither closed nor bounded. So it's, it's not compact. And try to prove that if A is bounded, then A bar is compact. Why? So A bar is closed by definition. So you just need to prove that a bar is bounded. And this is something that I asked you to prove in the previous, in the previous video. Okay. Now, this is, so this is the first concept that we need. Second concept is what we call sequential compactness. Okay, what do we mean by that? So first of all, what, what do we mean by a subsequence of a sequence? If, uh, if xn is a sequence and we have a strictly increasing uh, sequence of integers n1 and 2 and k and so on then the sequence x and k is called a subsequence of xn so what does it mean how do we, do we obtain a subsequence from a sequence suppose that you have a sequence that you list x1 x2 x3 x4 etc and from time to time you remove certain indices then what is left is called a subsequence Okay, and so for example, <clears throat> so I will give an example now, but note that we always have and k is at least k, okay? For example, suppose that you delete the elements of the sequence with an e with odd index, okay? What is left is the sequence x to k, so x2, x4, x6, if you start from 1, let us say. If you start from 0, it would be x0, x2, x4. Okay, so what, what are we doing here? We are removing the elements which, are, which have an, an, um, an, odd num, an odd index. Okay? So the sequence remaining is x to k. x0, x2, x4, x6, etc. is a subsequence of the original sequence x. Similarly, if we remove the terms with with even index, so you are left with x1, x3, x5, x7. The sequence, the what is left is the is a subsequence x to k plus one. Okay. And of course, you there, we can give other examples. You can if you for example x k squared, so you just remove the sequence x k squared is obtained by removing all the elements with a non-square index. Okay, so xk squared would be, uh, if we start from 0, x0, x1, x4, x9, x16. Okay, so you get the idea. And now, we say that a subset k of R, we say that a subset k of R is sequentially compact if every sequence of k has a conversion subsequence in k. This is not true. This is, a, this is a condition. This is a property of a subset. Not, not all subsets of R satisfy this condition. 
Okay. For example, if you take the sequence of integers, just one, two, three, four, five. Okay. This is a sequence of R, but it has no conversion subsequence. Why? Because the whole sequence converges to tends to infinity. Okay. So no matter how many terms you delete, okay, the the resulting sequence cannot be convergent. Okay, because it's unbounded. Okay. So now we have two conditions. We have the condition of compactness. We have the condition of sequential compactness. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I gave this. So this is the example. <clears throat> okay. Why R? So R is not sequentially compact. Okay. And more generally, if you take an unbounded set, an unbounded set cannot be sequentially compact because if it's unbounded, it contains a, a sequence con tending to infinity. So same reasoning. Okay. <clears throat> so Q is also not sequentially compact. R without Q is also not sequentially compact. The integers are not sequentially compact. And last condition, last property, is what we call limit point compactness. So we say that a subset K of R is limit point compact if every infinite subset of K has a limit point in K. And once again, not all subsets of R satisfy this property. Okay? <clears throat> Can give counterexamples, actually. So R is not limit point compact. For example, why 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 R is not uh, limit point compact? Because just take as a subset of R the integers, n. Let us say. Now n has no limit point. Okay, because for a simple reason, actually, <clears throat> just try to prove that. Okay, n has no limit point in R, or in itself, actually. So, because n is uh, the all points of n are isolated. Actually, I should have given this as an example. All points of n or z are isolated. By the way, why? Because if we okay, take a point n in the uh, take an integer n. The interval n minus one half n plus one half meets the integers only at n. So. All points of n are isolated, so n has no limit points. And the main theorem that uh, I will give now, but I will not prove, I will prove it next year, is that the three, these three concepts, these three conditions are equivalent. Okay, So saying k is compact, k is compact if and only if it's sequentially compact, if and only if it is limit point compact. Okay, and this is rather a deep theorem. Okay, it's not at all trivial. But we shall prove it next year in in more general in more generality in a more general context, not only in R. Okay, in the context of metric spaces. Okay, so in practice, let us just draw some conclusions from this deep theorem. The first corollary is known as bolzano weierstrass theorem. It states that every infinite and bounded subset of R has a limit point, okay, which means that at least one point is not isolated. Okay? Why? Okay. Let A be, infinite and be an infinite and bounded subset of R. And consider the closure of A. Call it K. Now, as you observe, K is both closed and bounded, so it's compact. Since it's compact, it is limit point compact by the previous theorem. Therefore, A has a limit point in K because A is an infinite subset of a compact set, of a limit point, limit point compact set. Okay, just a stating of and the next uh, useful result that we shall uh, use frequently 
is that every bounded sequence of real numbers has a convergent subsequence. Why? Okay, proof. Consider a bounded sequence xn in R. Then, since it's bounded, it's contained in some interval, a, b, that you can take close. Okay? If you like, take b the supremum and a the infinimum. Okay, but now we know that a, b is compact because it's closed and bounded, and therefore it is sequentially compact. Okay, so xn lives in a sequentially compact set, therefore it has a conversion subsequence. Okay? But none of these two results is straightforward to prove. Okay? But since this is an introductory course in the, on the topology of R, I will postpone the difficult proofs for next year. Okay? So you should know well these two corollaries, bolzano weierstrass and the bounded subsequence theorem, if you like, or corollary. And this concludes the last video on section 1.3, Introduction to the Topology of R. Now, I will post the exercises on, one, on my website shortly. And next week, we will solve them. So, but try to solve them on your own. Okay? So, this concludes chapter one about the real line. Thank you for your attention.